Okay, faith or fear? That's the question. That's what we're talking about here this week on Tack Room Devotional. I am Keith Brown. Now, the last couple days we've looked at a lot of different scriptures. The, the, the main scripture that we're looking at this week comes from um, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear. So any fear that you ever experienced in your life didn't come from God, so why would you tolerate it? The Bible tells us clearly in Luke chapter 10 that we have authority over all the power of the enemy. So if he's bringing fear or if you're bringing it yourself, you know, many times we can stir up fear without even, without even the help of Satan in any way. I hear people all the time tell me, Pastor Keith, uh, uh, they're talking about laying people off at the office and what am I going to do? Man, if I get laid off, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose my house. And, and if I lose my house, my wife would probably divorce me. And oh my gosh, what am I going to do for my kids? How are they going to go? Nothing's happened yet. They haven't lost their job. It's just that they start worrying and they start talking this junk. God did not give us a spirit of fear. He gave us this awesome, awesome power within us called faith, believing completely in him, trusting and relying on him for everything. That job that you think you're about ready to lose, don't worry about it. You were looking for it when you found it, and God blessed you with it. Maybe he's got something better, and you're still trying to hang on something that's, that's old time, that's not fulfilling your needs. Just think about that. Okay, so... Um, God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but he gave us a spirit of power, of love, and of sound mind. Let's operate in power. The power that comes because we're born again children of God. The favor of God's on us. Um, we're, we're blessed above and beyond anything we can ask or think. And, and the, the scriptures go on and on. That's how we ought to live our life. We operate in power, the power of the kingdom of God. We operate in love, the love of God, agape love. I love even when you don't deserve it. And I'm even willing to come and give up myself, give up some of my stuff so that you can live. That's agape love. And then finally, sound mind or sound doctrine. This scripture is sound. We can sink our teeth in it. Amen. Go with me to Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. This is very important. Make sure you get this one today. It says, only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and not in any way terrified by your adversaries which is to them a proof of perdition, but to you of salvation and that from God. Are you listening to me? It says, and not in any way be terrified by your adversaries. Well, who's our adversary? It's not your boss. It's not your wife. It's not your, your neighbor. Your adversary is Satan himself. But God, again, Luke chapter 10 tells you that I've given you authority over all the power of the enemy. So why in the world have you been operating in fear? That's absolutely foolish. That's why we need to get in the word because faith comes from hearing, hearing by the word of God, and we are people of faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 54. Ah, oh, good stuff, good stuff. Isaiah chapter 54. And go to... Verse 8. Isaiah 54, verse 8. And uh, with a little wrath, I hid my face from you for a moment. Okay, he, this is God. With a, li with a little wrath, not a whole bunch of wrath, but with a little wrath, I hid my face from you for a moment. But with everlasting kindness, I will have mercy on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. For this is like the waters of Noah to me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah would, would no longer cover the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be angry with you or rebuke you. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness will, shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has mercy on you. My goodness gracious, you ought to read that one again. 
that's the God we serve. That's why we should get excited. You know, fear is nothing more than a form of death or is born out of death. You know, that's where fear comes from. Faith is born out of life. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he came to give us life. Therefore, that's where our faith lies. Amen. Go to Hebrews. Hebrews. And chapter 2. I'm just trying to give you scripture. If you can sink your teeth into this scripture, you rise up above all this stuff and get excited and know that you are more than a conqueror, a world overcomer, heir to the throne of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Look at verse 13. And again, I put my trust in him. And again, here am I and the children whom God has given me. Inasmuch... I think I'm in the right place. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, and through death, he, that, he, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. Now again, here comes Jesus, destroys death, and what did I just say? That fear is born out of death. Jesus came and defeated Satan, dealt with death, death's out of the way, therefore fear should be out of yours and my comprehension. We only speak of life, and that brings about faith. And release those who through fear of death were all, all their lifetime subject to bondage. You have fear of death, you are subject to bondage. Satan has access to you to control your thought processes and cause you to walk in fear rather than in faith. Do not be afraid. Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.